Last week, we began our look at the book of Acts. And, um, you know, Luke, the, the physician, he's the writer of this book. And he explained how Jesus gave proof of his existence or gave proof of his resurrection by appearing to many people over a, a period of 40 days. And, and we know if you look at, in, in the book of Luke, the gospel according to Luke, written by the same author, uh, he talks about the, the women that Jesus met at the tomb or the two that were on the road to Emmaus. Um, and, and they were disheartened because of all that they had seen happen with Jesus. And he appears to them. Uh, it tells us that the disciples, he appeared to the dis- disciples when they were meeting in a locked room. And uh, one time, and, and Thomas wasn't there, and he wouldn't believe him until he saw him himself. So Jesus appears to his disciples again. And again, they're in a locked room, but this time Thomas is there. And, and Jesus tells him to put his finger in his hand or, and put his hand in his side to show that he was really alive. Um, and then we also read that he appeared to over 500 people at one time. And at the end, when, after giving all these proofs and, and Jesus is with his disciples, his followers, he tells them to go back to Jerusalem and, and to wait for the, the spirit to come upon them. And he says, when you receive the Spirit, you will receive power when that Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And, And we read that Jesus ascended into heaven before their very eyes. But as they were looking up, angels came and said, why are you looking up? He's going to come back just as he said. And so the disciples, they went to Jerusalem just as Jesus had commanded them to do. And they waited for this baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it tells us that they were in a, in a room, they were meeting together, and they were in prayer when they experienced, number one, the presence of the Spirit. Chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost came... They were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And so it it tells us on the day of Pentecost, the 50th day, the Spirit came. Jesus came and he, he revealed himself for 40 days. They go to Jerusalem, waited another 10 days. The day of Pentecost, the Spirit came. And it tells us the, the, the presence of the Spirit, the, the, just the um, extent of the Spirit, that, you know, the sound like a blowing, the blowing of a violent wind, an almost tornadic in, in sound. And tongues of fire came to rest on each one of them. And it says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. In this instance, they were just, they did not just receive the Spirit, but they were filled with him. And because of the filling of that Spirit that came to them, they were able to do some miraculous feats. They experienced, number two, the power of the Spirit. You know, it says in verse 4, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they ask, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, 
what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much to drink. They've had too much wine. And so, you know, they received the spirit in this upper room or in this room where they were meeting. And as the spirit fills them, they begin to speak in other tongues. Not, not in a tongue that, that no one could understand. You know, we hear of people speaking in tongues or praying in tongues and we can't, we don't understand a word that they're saying. But in this case, they spoke in different tongues, but everybody that was there recognized their own language. Now, this was the time, you know, Jesus was crucified during the Passover. And, and, and so all the people had come to Jerusalem for this celebration. And when Jesus hung on the cross, remember that the sign that was on the cross, um, the king of the Jews. And it was written in different languages because there were all these people from other nations were going to be there. And they saw Jesus up on the cross proclaiming that he was king of the Jews. And now, 10 days later, here are his followers who are speaking in different languages, languages from all these different nations, and they could understand what they were saying. The Spirit enabled them. It wasn't by their own abilities. And they declared the wonders of God. Their focus was not on the miracle, but on the miracle maker. You know, they weren't saying, look at what we can do now. They were, they were focused on, look at what God has done and is doing. And many times, there's a couple of times in Scripture where tongues are used. But it's in times when the message of Jesus Christ spreads. Remember, all these individuals from all these nations were in, this, in Jerusalem at this time. And so when God gave them the ability to speak in other tongues, it was so that the message was spread from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And so they were given, the, they had the presence of the Spirit, but they experienced his power. Simply by speaking, they did not try to speak in different languages. When they spoke, it was simply in different languages. And that's the power of, of the Spirit within, that he is able to do miraculous things, things beyond our own comprehension and understanding. And he receives the glory. And through this amazing account, there came number three, the proclamation of the Spirit. Verse 14, then Peter stood up with the eleven raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was, hap was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to, turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right, right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope, will rest in hope. 
because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had, had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And we see the proclamation of the good news, of the truth, through the Spirit of God, through Peter. Now, Peter stands up and he proclaims uh, with clarity the message of salvation. And we have to remember, it was not a predetermined message. He didn't spend, you know, X number of hours preparing that message and, and in deep study. It was a message of a life experience with Jesus and the power of the Spirit within him. It was the Spirit that gave him the words to speak to the people that were in Jerusalem that day. You know, he spoke about the presence and the power of the Spirit of God and how prophecies were going to be fulfilled by, by sons and daughters and, and, and young men would see visions and old men's, men would dream dreams and even the servants would prophesy. They would proclaim the news of Jesus Christ. He spoke of the future events that are yet to take place, that of David's proclamation of his kingdom lasting forever, that there was going to be some God was going to place someone on his throne forever and ever. And how other men of faith, David, Abraham, we know that they live, but we also know that they died and their tomb is still here to this day. But Jesus died, but he is now alive. For death could not contain him. And Peter's message brought about many convincing proofs of the resurrection and the power of the Spirit. But it also brought about, number four, the persuasiveness of the Spirit. Verse 37, after, <clears throat> after Peter shares this message, says, When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will, our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. You know, and it was simply by the, the Spirit's presence and the Spirit's power that Peter was able to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ for salvation. And it was only by that spirit that his message was used to persuade the people. You know, he finished that short message. And it tells us that 
the people responded, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replies, he answers them with, You need to repent. You need to turn away from your sins. Turn away from serving other gods. And not only repent, I want you to be baptized. Baptized in the name of Jesus. You know, saying you're making this outward confession, not just with word, but with deed. You're going to be baptized into the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And when you do that, you will receive the Holy Spirit. And it was a promise that was given to those that, that heard Peter preach, but it was also a promise given to all who would come after them. Those who are close and those who are far away. That they will be able to receive the Holy Spirit if they will repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. And he tells them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And he tells us that 3,000, about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So many pastors, many churches... You know, we, we live a lifetime to see that many people. Or a portion of that many people. And yet the Lord added to their number 3,000 that day because of the message. And it wasn't by their own abilities. It wasn't by their own words. It wasn't by their own actions. It was simply and solely by the power of God through the Spirit of God. And the privilege that we have today is that we still have access to that spirit. That spirit still has access <laughs> into our lives. You know, you've heard me say before, for those of us that believe in and have given our lives to Christ, his spirit has already been deposited into us. The spirit of God resides in each one of us. We have the Spirit's presence with us at all times. <clears throat> Do we believe that? Each and every day, every moment of our life, there's no time where the Spirit is not with us. Do we believe that? But there will also be times, even though we have the, fear, the Spirit, there will be times when we are filled with the Spirit and given power to do things by our own abilities or understanding. Like these, uh, these uh, followers of Christ uh, the, that were waiting for the Spirit, it came and it filled them and they spoke in other tongues. And they were able to preach a message or share a message that spread the gospel around the world. And so there may be times where we are able to speak in a way that other people can understand. Or that the Spirit will simply give us the right words to say at the right time. He'll give us the courage and the confidence to stand up for someone or something or to say things that need to be said. We may be filled with the Spirit and have discernment to make the wise decisions during really difficult times in our lives or in the lives of others. Now, do we believe that we have the power of the Spirit within us? That we can do, not us, we can do miraculous things. i sorry about that. We can do miraculous things through the Spirit. Or really, the Spirit can do miraculous things through us. He has the power to do that. Do we believe in the power of the Spirit? The Spirit that is within us can proclaim His message through us by the way we live our lives. By the way we interact with other people, by the way we speak, and, and the, the care that we give to those around us. You know, he will give us those words and the actions at the proper time to share the message of salvation through Christ. You know, do we trust that the Spirit can use us to proclaim the message of salvation? Do we trust in that Spirit that is within to guide our lives. For it is the spirit that is persuasive in his work. You know, we express the, the, the God's love through the spirit. 
And the Spirit persuades by His actions through us. You know, we cannot, we cannot make people come to, to the Lord. Only God can do that. But the Spirit that resides in us, that fills us, can persuade those around us. You know, we can pray and speak and live godly lives, but it is only by the Spirit that lives can change. Do we trust the Spirit to persuade people to come to Christ? Are we allowing him to work in us to do the things that he desires to do? And that's my hope as we continue going through the book of Acts, that, that we are open to the Spirit's leading. That I learn, that we all learn, what, is it, what does that sound like? What does it look like when the Spirit nudges us? What might it look like when he chooses to use us to spread the message of salvation? It's by the presence, the power, the proclamation, and the persuasion of the Spirit alone. But he uses us to bring it about, to bring it to fruition. And so will we trust in the Spirit that is within us to save the world? <laughs> to lead people to Christ. May we come to know him in such a special way that his spirit is a, guides our every thought and every action and that we will live for him and he will use us to glorify Jesus and God the Father forever and ever. God bless you. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.